outset, I congratulate our uh, Directorate of DECA and Women's Studies Center for organizing uh, this particular program on a very important topic, that's gender parity for ensuring quality work culture in higher education uh, institutions. One of the main need, one of the main objective also uh, addressed by new education policy uh, 2020 and uh, for the information of our guest Professor Mani Makalai, uh, I must tell her that uh, the presentation of Women's Studies Center was done in 2006 when we got the center in front of Professor R. Mighty Desai okay. and Professor uh, Veena Majumdar. Oh, oh, very good. Yeah, and other uh, professor uh, of eminence, Professor Sushila Koshik mm. was there, Professor uh, Indra Sen was there. Good. So all the stalwarts which good. you were talking good. about. And uh, when we got the center, after that, they kept on, you know, mentoring the Women's Studies Center of University of Kashmir in the form of capacity building programs, number of capacity building programs we organize and even the training of the trainers uh, program uh, we organized, yes. And uh, the center started with a certificate course in women and law and uh, as you know that we have a full-fledged a master's degree in gender studies now. So, uh, you know, uh, slowly and so slowly uh, it is still progressing and uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, by the, uh, you know, guidance of the administration, by the hard work of the faculty and by the, uh, you know, mentoring of all the related departments, whether dean, concerned or other departments, the, uh, you know, uh, Women's Studies Center is moving forward and playing its role even at the national level and even at the uh, UT level. As the Red Star has already said that we have uh, more number of female students in the form of PG uh, students as well as research scholars and girls on the campus who uh, are admitted by dent of their hard work. Yeah. So uh, this shows the type of, uh, you know, the guidance, the type of, uh, uh, you know, uh, interest their parents are showing in their education. And uh, in various earlier in uh, subjects like mathematics uh, or other science subjects, girls were less, but now, uh, they are equally getting admissions in these, uh, you know, uh, courses also. And you'll be happy to know that our girls are equally participating in sports activities, extracurricular activities. So the time is changing and, but definitely uh, we have to guide. We have to guide both the boys and both girls, but girls we need to encourage that's uh, very important and provide facilities for them. Uh, I don't know whether you have read about it or not. Recently, the UT higher education, uh, you know, uh, initiated with uh, College on Wheels. And yes. this College on Wheels was our own 50 girls from our university and around uh, 250 from our affiliated colleges from Kashmir, total 700, some from Jammu, few from University of Delhi, and they, uh, yeah. So it was for girls who are participating in NSS, you know, they had to give the projects. We want to see the type of, uh, you know, the idea they have. They went on college, they went to ISRO, ISC Bangalore, uh, Goa Shipyard, you know, like this, and these were the girls who had never been even out of uh, Srinagar. So these are the initiatives even our UT government is changing towards the, uh, you know, exposure of girls, which definitely will, uh, you know, help them. And, uh, you know, uh, when I was into this capacity building, I'm a beneficiary of capacity building uh, program itself, one of the, you know, the, uh, the earlier ones and uh, traveled, in fact, I must have traveled throughout my country, 
for this capacity building as a resource person in uh, women and uh, women leadership and academics. Economics. Yeah, Economics. yeah. So a very good experience, enriched experience, which you know helped me, which uh, you know made me visible. I must say, and uh, which gave me that uh, satisfaction that uh, and gave me that commitment I should do something for other women and I try my best you know uh, to see wherever women are but the hard working ones they should uh, you know work hard they should given uh, be given the work and they should contribute to the system we do have uh, you know women representation in all the committees without that I will not uh, pass it Good. and I had That's advocated it. even you know when I was not the vice chancellor uh, even the vice chancellors at that time I must say that uh, they were very sensitive to it whenever I used to point out anything uh, they used to you know listen to me uh, wherever I uh, you know put up any uh, you know uh, anything that was the matter of uh, concern. And uh, our dean students' welfare, uh, in our dean students' welfare, we have separate buses for females. Okay. You know, I'm just telling you the type of facilities initiating. the university is uh, initiating in order to uh, facilitate mm -hmm. the uh, girls Comfort. coming to the, uh, you know, university. We have number of girls' hostels. We are coming up with some uh, new. And uh, this is how the University of Kashmir is facilitating our education for girls. Rightly said, education is the main tool of empowerment, uh, not only for empowering girls, even empowering our boys. So our priority should be education, good education, even moral education, uh, and value-based education also. And of course, move towards the latest technology uh, this is the age of technology, uh, you know, go side by side with it and at the same time have these types of programs where uh, you as a resource person who has got a vast experience in other parts of the country uh, come and speak to our audience, to our faculty, to our students. Definitely it will give them an idea how the other parts of our country are working and I do look forward. We have many more such programs with you in uh, future. I know that you are one of the very active members for uh, women empowerment, and definitely uh, we'll organize some more of, of these programs. You'll be happy to know that tomorrow we have a program on cyber crime, okay. and uh, chairperson of All India Women's Commission. Okay. She's coming herself. Okay. Uh, you know, as a chief guest for that particular program. So we keep on uh, engaging our faculty, keep on engaging our students wherever we can. Uh, and uh, you'll be happy to know that even in the colleges we have introduced uh, gender studies as an optional, okay. you know, and there are takers, boys are more takers okay. than uh, girls. And even in our own campus, it is there in the, uh, you know, uh, in the open uh, basket and again here we have more uh, you know takers as boys as long as this gender parity in work culture is concerned uh, i appreciate the university for uh, making an attempt to bring all the faculty colleagues to present because that is indeed required and you all must have been from different discipline so it shouldn't be like confining to only women's study center or only social sciences rather it has to be for all the departments be it science natural science and biosciences and also management studies commerce etc it shouldn't be like uh, it is none of my concern to talk about parity gender parity is the uh, be the takeaway for everyone and i'm happy also uh, to uh, get a note that there is already uh, such initiatives are on and gender audit is also on so the national uh, policy for women empowerment 2001 
is also underlining that women should be fully participating in the public life. If that is to happen, that we need to make all initiatives. And already there are a number of initiatives and science faculty must be knowing and even research scholars that the government of India has been, um, uh, has introduced to several uh, proactive measures to retain the uh, scholars uh, to continue their research and also teachers to uh, continue rather than feeling the issues of uh, glass ceiling or already uh, pointed out that the child care or uh, even care economy to it's not just child care alone for the women uh, it is the entire uh, care services uh, are expected to be delivered by women and in the uh, Gladi also underlined uh, be with beautiful diagrams I also um, try to um, present them uh, that how um, the path is so linear for women, men whereas there is a kind of a, a break uh, after the marriage and sometimes elderly care and other care services are also expected to be uh, delivered by women rather than men and you have not um, trained that is the issue it is not finding fault with men at all rather it is the society through its socio-cultural norms uh, and gender norms also uh, there has been a division of labor and uh, in spite of women coming to public life uh, men uh, continue to uh, mind their work defined by the culture whereas women also doing the same and only in some certain sorry context where the gender sensitivity is its height it is uh, being shared also and uh, taken in a very empathetic perspective uh, and uh, gender perspective also to share the responsibilities and understand and share that is happening and I am happy that in the years to come in the future generation would definitely be different uh, compared to the uh, already uh, gendered communities like us because we have all been trained by our own parents uh, to kind of um, do a stereotype whatever has been imposed us and uh, UGC has also and uh, our own I chancellor herself is a product of the capacity building program for women managers in higher education and will be happy if that is also regularly offered to our own faculty uh, and it was UGC underlining that it should be for women only I think uh, we can have it for men also in due course of the time if gender equity is <laughs> ensured so I will be happy to come and handle the session and our own colleagues uh, from Sushila Kausik is also willing to come. They are all the stalwarts in that program and we can hold a Friday program. In fact, the IQAC, no, uh, HRDC uh, has integrated that program into a gender sensitization, uh, it's a week long program. It was not the kind in the capacity building. The capacity building program was sometime integrated with the Women's Studies Center. Later, now it is with HRDC. So HRDC is just offering it as an online program like any other short-term program that may not be adequate to kind of capture the, uh, the, the requirement. So it is better that we, through Women's Studies Center, UGS is also insisting that the Women's Studies Center should, should work uh, towards ensuring gender equity and equality and whatever the kind of initiatives which we are supposed to initiate can be and um, uh, I think the gender audit is also happening and uh, similar such uh, initiatives can be suggested by the women's study centers being uh, and gender sensitive uh, faculty colleagues every, everyone should be gender sensitive and they will be more informed than others uh, I'm not saying that others are not but the because the very subject itself is on gender as uh, the director rightly pointed out and so you are more informed and you are thoroughly re reading and every day you are getting informed about what is happening and therefore it is quite uh, relevant to implement such programs through uh, women's study centers uh, which UGC is also expecting and uh, the other major uh, area in which you need to uh, concentrate is of course the entire three pillars the teaching learn research and extension and also the human resource uh, where we have the faculty and the staff and the students so these three categories and three uh, different contexts uh, are supposed to be um, uh, audited uh, as to whether women are represented sufficiently in all the committees because there are a number of decision making committees and uh, sometimes it doesn't um, have any women representative at all I should I, I only expect uh, uh, I only think or see that the Kashmir University may have because you have the women vice chancellor as the head. Proud privilege that 
Dr. Dika is conducting this workshop, which is of immense importance, particularly to the uh, University of Kashmir from different angles, from the angle that we have a largest number of female students on campus at present, scholars as well as the students. We are going to have a NAC accreditation in the future also. But the moot point remains that uh, when we talk about the women empowerment or the gender justice or gender equity, there are a lot of things to be pondered. Particularly when we took, when if we see the trickle down effect or the downward effect of this gender parity or women empowerment, we see that the basic role and an important role is played by the education. Education from the primary to the highest level, what we call now as the postdoc or the doctorate level. But when we come to the, our own UT of JNK, we see that there is still a lot of gaps between the education system of our UT. Uh, it is at the UT level, when we see whole UT of JNK, if we see the literacy rate probably of 22, if we see it, we see that there are 77% literacy at present and we see that there is 56% of the female in JNK state. And when we go to the district level, we see that in the intra-district or the inter-district level, the women literacy is very down. So UGC has long back or the planners has long back addressed a few issues when we say that there are the excess and equity part is lacking in the Indian education system. And under that, we have established schools in almost in every village. Now there is a school, primary and middle school. Then we see that there are health secondary is also established and colleges almost now in every nook and corner of the country. We see that the colleges are established in every nook and corner. But still we see that there is a gender gap in literacy of our particularly ut has more uh, gender gap and we need to address this issue first if we can address the issue of literacy at our own level we'll start from our own home if we give good education to our both male and female at our own level to have gender justice there then we can go to our neighbors and to our other places so that the females are educationally empowered and I believe as a student of sociology I believe that if the women are educationally and men are educationally empowered and having a good access and equal access to the education I believe that the gender parity gender justice and gender equity will automatically come and uh, when we come to our own university system under the leadership of our honorable vice chancellor who has already worked in the, she has been founder director of this women's studies center and she has worked a lot on this particularly about the gender justice uh, through she has worked it on through the uh, dsw to the women's studies center to her own department uh, home science where we see almost uh, 99 percent females only as students so we are trying under her guidance we are trying to create an atmosphere at the university system which is gender sensitive where we can uh, give equal access to the males and females for every opportunity but uh, we know that there are certain inherent issues in the educational system in the in the organizational system which need to be addressed and most probably it may take it may take time. For example, if we see the ratio of females in the uh, faculty members, we will see the ratio of females in the uh, non-teaching setup or officers level. We have to. It may it may take, but it is coming up, inshallah. It may take still. It may take some time to get it towards slightly higher side, which we are we are we are addressing, and uh, inshallah the leadership of her will ensure that the University of Kashmir becomes a place where which is totally gender sensitive and where gender justice has been provided to everyone.
for the genesis of this workshop is concerned, let me apprise Honorable Vice Chancellor and this gathering here that you must be sometimes wondering whether there is any relationship between the gender parity and the quality <coughs> culture existing or it is a relationship that we are trying to draw out of nowhere. We have the stalwarts, one on my left side, Honorable Vice Chancellor herself has worked on gender uh, all through her life and on my right a resource person and other people who have worked in this field. But somehow uh, I have been thinking about the growth and development trajectory of our institution in a larger context. How institutions outside also have actually uh, made a difference, made a mark. And this caught my attention and I could see that when we look at the world at large, if you look at the difference between the developed versus the developing world. One of the hallmarks of the developed world to have achieved what they have done is probably that they have earlier recognized the role of women, especially in the overall development of the nation. Because as they say, otherwise, if you keep half of the uh, population away, you can imagine the, uh, the fate of the, uh, or the state of the affairs. And something that really lends credibility to this statement is nothing else but this year's Nobel Prize winning work of the economics by uh, Professor uh, Claudia Galdi. You might have read about her work. Yes. And her work is primarily about, uh, about the role of gender parity in the uh, global uh, global economy or global Growth. especially in the labor market and she beautifully illustrates if you might have heard her or read uh, at least some basic stuff about her work what she has demonstrated is that over the last 200 years how this basically trajectory has changed and she has given that what you call as that u-shaped curve that she says that men and women started together as an agrarian society, contributing to the economy jointly. But as we proceeded as a civilization towards industrialization, at, the, at that phase, women started sort of, I mean, the role of women started to be ignored in a way. Because it was found that probably they are not, say, industry fit as probably men are. And then she said that post-industrialization, this curve started again. I mean, it was a basically, it was a U-shaped curve. This way, down, and then start going up again. Again, because of two or three reasons. Primarily because post-industrialization, this education base for women actually increased globally. And that made a difference. And what, the, what this global work also demonstrates is that how best we can actually take care of these uh, concerns. And I mean, having said this, there was a paper recently also published in Nature which uh, talks about STEM subjects, role of women in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics subjects. And it has demonstrated through an empirical analysis globally that uh, wherever women have participated in these STEM disciplines, the quality of discourse has been far impressive, far more impressive, far more you know, productive and fruitful than otherwise. 